how should people think about onboarding into the GPU mining market if they're interested in home mining or mm-hmm. maybe even creating their own farm? It, there's like a threshold for like a home miner and you'll hit it sometimes thermally. Like you just literally can't do anything with the heat um, or you'll you'll tap out the, your box because not a lot of even though you have 200 amps into your house, it doesn't mean all that can be dedicated to mining. You still probably want to like wash your clothes and stuff. So like there's there is a uh, kind of a, a barrier there to kind of go all in quick. So I've kind of taken an approach, especially recently, is just a crawl, walk, run strategy. So first I look at if you have zero to no experience then probably starting with a a kind of pre-canned broker solution in the beginning to start it off. So that maybe that's nice hash, maybe that's, uh, you know, CUDA miner, something that's some, something that's set up to where it's a simple piece of software, but don't stop there. It's kind of get you in, let you understand on how to set up a wallet, how you get your payout out of that wallet, how your hardware is optimized and what different coins there are, right? So it's a very, very quick, you could get lost on the internet one night and by 2 a.m. you're it's mining, right? And then you wake up in the morning, you're like, hey, I got a payout. Um, that's like the crawl, walk, run, single GPU gets you familiar with it. From that, after maybe a week of doing that, then you can start researching, uh, you know, maybe I scale that to a couple, a couple cards, um, the cards it's specifically in gpus you know there's nvidia and amd we might have intel here pretty soon too but there's uh, just a swath of videos out there now that will help you get certain aspects of the uh, you know the optimization and when we say optimization it means heat and it means power usage which kind of go uh, hand in hand to make it more optimal to because you know you're you have a variable cost that you have control of, right? So if you just plug a GPU in and you go, it's going to cost you more because you haven't configured it. And plus you're putting out more heat. So there's some optimization there. So crawl walk running into that and getting those basic principles to understand thermal issues um, and you know, thermal runaway with GPUs. Also uh, just the maintenance part of that, because if you run a GPU 24-7, 365, and it's making you money that's great uh, if it burns out the fans in seven months and then you're like where do i buy fans at you know like you'll run into the issue so behavioral um adjustment to that to make sure that you're extending your equipment also so i'm kind of like a crawl walk run uh strategist in it but if it makes sense and you understand that scale and you get to that first gp rig and maybe you scale it to the second one then that's when you start like maybe working with family or somebody that wants to maybe go in with you and it becomes like an ops thing like who's going to maintain it um gpu mining is substantially more ops intensive than asic mining so you got to maintain it um more often i mean having the farm up in wisconsin it's it's constant and todd lives up there the partner that lives up there with the farm he's always there like every day. So like it's uh, it's an intensive operation. You have sometimes issues that that may take down the power and then bring things back up. It's not as graceful as an ASIC mining. So there's a lot more intensive when you scale it. So to Seth's point, going out there and helping some of these operations, you know, optimize and find a maintenance schedule. I mean, we have annual maintenance schedules where we shut things down, you know, clean things. I've taken some of the videos that are out there show that process. Um, so it's very task intensive. So it's one of those things that it is a much more managed type of thing. And as things start to adapt and companies and solutions come around to make that a managed service, much like what you guys are doing with Compass Mining, to where they can be a participant in that, they can make an investment and then co-locate with somebody power wise, find the better cost. Um, I think that's a much more tenable approach if you're going long term and want to sleep at night, (laughs) you know, to make sure your stuff's running. But it's never to discourage anybody to not be part of it, because there is something that is just genuinely exciting, knowing that that the element that's lost when we talk about mining is the fact that it's permissionless. And the fact that gets people hooked initially is the fact that they can find it on the Internet in the middle of the night and have a payout reward in the morning and they didn't ask for permission they were just a contributor to a network and they're a participant that's paying it back right so that simplicity and that relationship with the network itself like changes everything when you start to look at the implications of that is from just the fact that you can participate and have that relationship that way so i i think crawl walk run gets them in like seth said is that that gateway piece there and then 
based on the complexity of their situation, will guide them either to a managed solution or manage them to like they want to scale it up with other folks.